What is up, people? It's Dave. It's Duncan. Back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. And for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from London metal trio Urn. The band's new album A Feast on Sorrow will be released on August 11th via Candlelight Records. Um, formed in 2016 from the ashes of UK hardcore band Hang the Bastard, Urn have returned with a deeply personal second studio album, A Feast on Sorrow, which is a stark rumination on the grim inevitabilities of disease, dementia and deterioration in old age, felt intimately by Urn frontman Joe Nally. Joe Duplantier, frontman of modern metal Goliaths, Gojira, unexpectedly... Literally, you've literally just answered two of my questions, so that's fine. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Um, unexpectedly reached out to the band directly, having been a fan of the band's debut album, Serpent and Spirit, offering Urn an opportunity to record with him at his Silver Chord studio in Brooklyn, New York. Joe Nally, Urn frontman, adds, We had many ups and downs throughout this process, but the end result is something of the three of us are extremely proud of. Having the honour to travel to New York to work alongside Joe Duplante and Johan Mayer, Meyer on this record is something we didn't think would be possible and on top of all that to have Ted Jensen master this record has been an experience we once dreamed of. This whole album is extremely personal for me, it's made me grow as a person and has also helped me understand the grieving process better than before. This isn't a joyful or uplifting record, it's a very raw and real and when the opportunity to work with Joe came to be we all knew he was the perfect person to capture the message of this record. There were a lot of dark times. Losing people was a horrible thing. When the reality hits, it shocks. I was full of pent-up emotion, anger, confusion, and I could only seem to release that through aggression. This is much darker. There were quite a few fun elements to our first LP, Serpent and Spirit. Uh, there aren't many of those here. It was an incredibly cathartic experience to be able to write this album, to scream it, to hear it back. I've got my emotions out. I've got my meaning out. I've got my message out. What I needed to do is done. Okay, so, uh, Arn and uh, their new album, A Feast in Sorrow, Duncan. Um, had, had you, I take it you hadn't heard, had you heard Arn before, or their last album, or? So, so I have a loose recollection of this coming in, but it being handed off to someone for a written review. We mm -hmm. didn't actually run the, but I remember you talking about that at the time. Mm-hmm. That's right. So yeah, I did not go back and listen to the previous album, so this is my oh. first listen. Oh, interesting. So, uh, what did you think? What did you make of a feast on sorrow? So, the, the the you answered one of the big questions for me was there were sections here that were <laughs> kind of reminiscent of a more sludgy Gojira, mm. um, to the point where I was like, there was a couple of like right out the Gojira playbook segments yeah. that kind of stuck out to me to a point where I was like <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's not a bad thing but it kind of just like just that mm, you bite the bottom lip sort of thing where you're just like oh it's kind of tasty mm. um, and some of the production techniques had a Gojira-esque feel without sending French mm. um, <laughs> yeah. if you know what I mean because uh, they, they don't sound French yeah. but the, no. the, the, the kind of production techniques on the way the drums particularly sound mm -hmm. um, in combination with some of the chunkier guitar work that kind of synchronicity that Gojira kind of have set the standard kind of gold standard on yeah what were there were peppered throughout quite a bit to the point where we say like the you know the kind of if it looks like, smells like, tastes like, <laughs> it's adjacent to, yeah. could there be a connection? Um, even some of the vocal techniques in parts have a very Joe feel about them. Mm. But yeah. I think that might come with recording with the guy, his kind of his inclination to record a particular way, and that, that kind of bleeds through. Mm. Once again, it's not, this is not a, it sounds like. No. Is just reminiscent of, yeah, yeah. Um, like when you listen to tracks like uh, "Becoming the Queen," there are sections where you get like clean vocals, almost, almost kind of choir-like, built up on top of each other. 
with the reverb on them, which is a technique I know for a fact Gojira use. Mm. So, and like I say, it's those elements are just brought in. The fact that they're recording with the guy makes sense. Yeah. So, um, Arden, a dense, dense son of a bitch, this album. Really interesting because I think and it's something I, I feel I'm seeing more often, which I quite like seeing more often because it was a bugbearer of mine for the longest time. It's an album that certainly feels like thought has been put into the composition and placement of the tracks. Mm. Uh, this is an album which has essentially kind of three parts. Uh, the first parts are uh, the first three tracks close now on a big, like 11 minute set piece. Then I would say the the next ones are essentially tracks four, five, and six, which are all relatively small tracks in or around the five minute mark. Um, then the the kind of closing of the track is a kind of quieter interlude section leading into another mm. massive sprawling set piece of a closing track. Yeah, I mean it's it's bathed in despair, and there's no getting around that. The moments of kind of joy and melody you get in here are in a kind of more minor chord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a result there there's always a kind of feeling of of smiling through the pain which is the, the, the kind of way that i felt in this album it was like a, there's someone putting on the brave face even though the world's falling apart mm -hmm. um i mean musically this is a three piece you said three oh yeah fuck uh, <laughs> right musically this is like really 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 good um there's a lot of diversity in the guitar playing some moments where they hit those kind of big almost kind of mastodony sludgy huge proggy sections mm. um which are juxtaposed with that kind of very tight double bass drum like kind of rapid tom like almost pan mute guitar just like like right in with a da -da 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 -da. and those segments are are really well placed like and you get like a good feel for what you're gonna get in this album from the opening two tracks which really show kind of both sides of the the kind of sludgy ferocity mm -hmm. the technical grit that they have in spades um a lot of the flurries and some of the melody as well so they're, they're kind of encompassed here and i kind of felt like after the first two tracks especially when looking at the track list and seeing that it was a, an 11 minute track coming up on a stumble of words i kind of felt like this next track makes or breaks the album for mm. me like, it kind of has to because it's so long like yeah. you're already showing me elements in the first two songs of those of dexterity of kind of musical almost stretchings that where are you going to take me on an 11 minute song that I haven't already heard mm. on two tracks which cover over 11 minutes um, and a stumble of words kicks in and it kind of floored me the first time I listened to it it's, it's a track that is is dense but empty uh, as oxymoronic as that sounds mm. um, and and full of weight the, the, the kind of vocals all the way through this album but specifically on that one kind of felt like I was being pulled into his soul mm. um, in a way that I just wasn't really ready for. Um, I, I, that one particularly adds a huge amount of emotional depth because it has time to play with the with the, the order, with the structure and specifically with the, the conveyance of what it's trying to do. Mm. Um, and I got through that and I, I'll be honest with you, I was fucking spent <laughs> um, kind of sitting in my chair just like and I was like, oh goody, we are one third, <laughs> one third through. Let's let's do this. Um and they get a really good one two punch on the burden and becoming the ocean. Um I think those two tracks are really once again really well placed. There's nothing here which explodes with any sort of massive changes in tempo. And the songs themselves, there are moments where the drums will, you know, either pick up to go into double time or, or cutting down to go at half time but they are essentially if you were if you're doing the old metronome four count they're still pretty much in mm. or around yeah. you know the, the, that tempo mm. but those clever techniques make you feel like they're jumping around a lot more than they actually are mm. um specifically and i mentioned it before uh, becoming the ocean is i think the first track where i was very aware of 
Oh, they're really leaning into quite a lot of melodic techniques, a lot of layering of the vocals, which in other songs they don't have to do because frontman, vocally speaking, has a very powerful presence. So I really got kind of enthralled and captured on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, a feast on sorrow is he is he very smartly plays track, in that it kind of almost closes the album out into peace, which would be a fine closing song to yeah, be yeah. honest with you. Um, so it kind of feels like it's it's bringing you up and then down into peace, mm. and then you get the long goodbye where the memories go. Which is arguably the piece de resistance on this album in terms of like, this could just be a standalone song from the band, independent of the album, and it would work incredibly well. Mm. Um, it, it pays off the journey, I think, in a great way. There is a comment that I'll come back to, which came out on further listens. Um, but on that one, you kind of feel like it's the band trying to be a little bit more experimental. Now, once again, having not heard the previous album, I don't know if they covered some of this grim then. Mm. Um, but it felt like it was a bit more experimental. They were trying a lot more with it. There's a lot more segments where they're using different techniques. Um, and almost a kind of call and an answer. You know, it's like the, the opening of the song feels like it's it's asking a question and the end of the track yeah. feels like it's closing it out. It's very, very, very well done. Um, musically, it's jaw-droppingly good. Uh, the riffs are fucking stunning. They're gritty. They open up into sections and melody with ease. Um, I think there are moments which I mentioned it before remind me of Gojira. There's like certain bits, and I think it might be, maybe to die twice, um, where they use that almost kind of disjointed not quite sure where the loop is on the guitar closing out it's like mm. a riff that plays and then it plays in a different way then plays in a different way and it actually hooks at a loop halfway through it mm-hmm. um which i really enjoyed it's a gojira technique but i really enjoy it here um bass is nice and audible it's nice and clean comes through full simmed um which explains the three piece because had there been a four piece i would have been very surprised uh, the drumming is fucking nuts i love it it's powerful has a really 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 nice studio sound mm. like just there's yeah. a tone and quality to about it which just it, it just it, it lands it also elevates the sound of the album it mm-hmm. makes it sound bigger and grander yeah um that then you know it would be under a different production technique um I did see I had some comments about further listens. <clears throat> on on repeat listens, I don't think it hit me the same way it hit me on the first one on certain tracks. Mm-hmm. I feel like specifically track eight, which I enjoy uh, as a standalone track. I think on the album itself as a closer, it's a bit long. Mm. Um, I, I just felt like it kind of... It's not that it gets lost in itself, but I, I feel it's a, maybe a little bit too self-indulgent. Mm-hmm. I also think that overall the comment that I made about it necessarily not having a huge amount of dexterity in terms of tempo changes. It doesn't hinder it, but at the same time, it is a kind of, right, I'm blocking out everything, um, Mm. and I'm sitting down and paying attention to this album as opposed to being an album that I would casually put on. I feel like at times it would be difficult if I didn't know where a track finished and where our next track started mm. that I might still think I'm listening to the same track and it's yeah. that, that shift between um, I remember Hang the Bastard so uh, this is this is quite a step removed from mm. that um, it also sounds fucking huge and professional as fuck um, so like I just assumed these guys had a, a litany of albums behind them mm. and you know this was just the new one so I'm quite surprised to hear that this is a relative yeah, kind of you are project, but the pedigree of the band makes sense. Uh, yeah, this is really, 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 really good. I think it, it conveys a lot of really dark emotion and imagery. I think it does it very, very, very well. I think the song structures are very, very clever. I think the production is Chef's Kiss. Um, yeah, it does at times remind me of its producer. Um, that's not a bad thing when you are reminiscent of one of arguably the greatest metal bands of the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing but it's not they're not in the same genre they're just there's just certain ways in the composition certain techniques and definitely the production that oh, ground it back to there yeah. would I see these guys on tour? yes should I think they should just be on tour with Gojira all the time? yes <laughs> um, I think they're they sound fucking huge mm. 
Like to the point where I kind of feel like if they were playing like an O2 Academy, I would go and see them mm -hmm. because I think they could pull it off. Yeah. There's just something about their sound that just sounds fucking massive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, it was a, it was he. I'm not gonna say I came out hop skipping and jumping after each listen. It's not that sort of album. Yeah. But you do feel like you have went through an experience listening to it, mm. which not a lot of albums can claim. Mm. Nice. What about yourself, Dave? Nice. What about you? What about, what about Big Davey, the expert that's checked at their previous album? Well, um... No? Okay, cards cards on the table, you're Duncan. I will place them you out. You are in the band on... <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Reviewing an album. I am Joe Duplanty. Give me a second. Yeah, actually, uh, they replaced their drummer in 2022. Uh, <laughs> and it uh, turns out it's actually me. I you did not... disappear for a while. I do, I do remember. Um, okay, so I, you, you've heard me go on about this band before. I loved Hang yes. the Bastard. Loved Hang the Bastard. Um, yeah. I reviewed um, Sex in the Seven Circle um, mm -hmm. on our previous website, Rock and Roll Reviews, way back in the day. Uh, I loved it. Absolutely loved that album. Um, so I was generally when those guys called it a day, I was gutted. I was like, "Fuck, this is fucking, this is the worst day, Duncan. This is the <laughs> worst day." Um, but then when I heard that two of the members were starting something new, I was like, "This is a great this day, is the Duncan. Best day. This is the best day." <laughs> um, You're a man of simple taste. Yeah. Love it. Um, and then I listened to their debut album, um, Serpent and Spirit, and I couldn't get into it. <laughs> and I was like. Really? This what is what is going on here? Because I was I was reading. Obviously, I, I gave it to someone else to review for the site, um, and I was seeing all these reviews online, people chatting about it, and really enjoying the album, giving it huge praise on magazines and, and review sites. And I was like, "What is going on? I should enjoy this way more than I did." But there's just something here that just. I am not getting. You couldn't. Um, you couldn't put your finger on what no, it was that, um, was that was missing or not there. And it's weird because the the styles that they're playing are stuff that's in within my wheelhouse that I should really like. The album was produced by Chris Fielding at Folk Studios. It was on Candlelight <laughs> Records. I was like, what is going on? Why am I not getting that, this album? This um, is a Davy album, surely. Totally. Um, and I, I was like, I just, I, I kept going back to it, and I'd get to a certain point, and I was just like, no, I just, just not getting this at all. Um, I think, like after listening to this and going back, and I listened to uh, Serpent Spirit again, I think I had a hard time trying to figure out what type of band they were trying to be. Um, oh, right. And I felt when I, I re-listened to the album again, I still have the same feelings about it. I feel like it was really kind of overfilled with ideas, um, mm. and I just didn't think that this, the blend of styles was kind of cohesive enough yet. It was just a bit too all over the place for me. It's so, difficult when you're coming out an established band yeah. and you want to start something new and you don't want it to sound like the yes. band you were just in. True. So, um, but I, I kind of found I felt like they were still kind of finding their sound and they weren't quite sure themselves where they were going to go with it. So when this album came in, I was like, I was fifty fifty. I was like, do we review this or do I pass it on again and just like give it to someone else because. I mean, I'd There's a talk. sliding doors timeline here where I didn't hear this album because of you, <laughs> right, you motherfucker? I'd, I'd rather talk about an album that I like to one that I don't. Um, and I was clearly in the minority on the last one, but I was like, it's been two years since that album. Things change. They've had a bit more time to kind of like chisel their sound. And then, not gonna lie, big Joe Duplante had been involved. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe swayed my decision. I, 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 like, here's the scales. The scales are slightly leaning <laughs> down on the negative. I Joe the plant he's put on that, and it just fucking flips. Yeah, yeah, flips over. absolutely. I've got you. Um, and like, I, I think I'll start there because that production, holy fuck! Like from the the opening chords of the the flood flood came rushing in, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Like. Mm. I liked the production on Separate and Spirit. Um, Chris Fielden, as we've we spoke to him in the past, he is a, a master behind the desk. Yeah. Um, but this one, like, just hits differently. Um, much more metallic sounding. Um, a bit, almost a bit colder sounding. Um, guitars are razor sharp. Lots of kind of detail in the guitar, but um, a lot of nice kind of a nice push in the kind of mids of the guitar. Um, not not like the guitars aren't like huge in the bottom end, but. Mm -mm. The bass is absolutely thunderous underneath the guitar, so like the combination of the two makes this album sound huge. Um, 
agree with you. The drum sounds super punchy. Um, just you know that the production, of the drums just gives this album like a huge backbone. Um, so I think like props need to go to Joe and uh, Johan, who's the uh, the the engineer, sound engineer, engineer at Silver. Oh, so I got you a pun out of nowhere there with your backbone comment. That's a <laughs> good name. I'm Don't all even know over I'm this. Doing it, Duncan. Don't even know all I'm doing over it. this. All over this. It was just for me. I could see the wink when you say you were like that. <laughs> <Bad boy. laughs> um, but I, I know what you're saying. Like this, this has that kind of like um, kind of grandiosity of a Gojira album, um, but it doesn't sound French at the same time. It's, it's kind of yeah. weird. Um, but yeah, the, the, the production they went with really suits the band sound. That down, down to down to the tea. Um, I think in terms of the album itself. Um, I think I think I've turned a corner with these guys. Oh. Um, and the album, this album for me was just far more connected um, than the previous album, both uh, stylistically and thematically. It feels like it flows more naturally, um, and I think that the theme of the album plays a big part in that. Um, I do think there's a, a darker, more kind of somber tone to this album, and that kind of bleeds right the way throughout the release. Um, and I think that for me makes these tracks feel a bit more kind of bonded together. Mm. Um, stylistically, I feel the same way. The styles they've utilised on the album all feel like they're kind of working together rather than it being disjointed and kind of jumping from style to style. Um, you've still got like elements of sludge, some hardcore in there, some thrash. Um, th and those elements were on Serpent and Spirit. Um, and you get all that kind of rolled into that opening track. Um, it's just, you know, it comes out with pace, it's got groove, it's very riff heavy. Um, and it kind of does what you want but like, as an opening track. Um, nothing that I was like kind of blown away with. Um, mm. I think the I think the album actually gets better as it goes on. Um, but I thought there were some kind of well placed moments of of cleans and the vocals and the melody um, that open the track up. You know, give it that kind of breathable moment in amongst all that kind of heaviness. And I feel like it was very tastefully done as well. It doesn't feel like just oh we're wedging a kind of big you know clean chorus for the sake of it. Um, yeah. And I think there's enough heaviness around about that that it doesn't feel like it dilutes the track in any way either. Um, but the album is like full of heavy moments and it's hard not to sound heavy with a production like this. Um, there are moments on each track where you'll be like, you know, you get a bit of that kind of stank face, you're a bit like, oh, <laughs> fucking hell, man. Um, and there's, there was a great moment on um, To Die For, uh, To Die Twice, sorry. Um, it's about the kind of three minute mark where it is just super heavy really groove central um and it's got a bit of a that kind of like pantera kind of groove um there is a bit of goji around there not you're not gonna can't get away with that get away from that um and also a, a band that no one will fucking remember called 40 grit i was getting a kind of bit of that oh kind yeah of, kind of coming out you're as the well. only one that listened to 40 grit yeah, back yeah no one else has heard of them um but i had a bit of that in there as well um but they they place those heavy moments quite smartly um in places that will land with more impact Hmm. Um, and it makes it more kind of satisfying to listen to. Um, that part in particular comes after a kind of softer part in the song with pick guitars and clean vocals, and then it basically rips you on your asshole with this fucking massive groove. Um, but I think one of the, my favourite things that they've done on this album is there's a, an, an increase in kind of blackened elements on this album. Hmm. Um, you get a, like a, a little trace of it early on, not too much, a wee bit in the guitars at times, a wee bit in the vocals, but as the album goes on, tracks like um, a little bit on a stumble of, of words and then The Burden and then Becoming the Queen, um, they, they those tracks, they really start to let that black inside out a little bit more. And, and I love that, absolutely love that. Um, a stumble of words, initially, like you, I was like kind of concerned. I was like, oh, right, we're going 11 minutes already, are we? All right, okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> But I actually, call my shot, call my shot, it's yeah. up there, 11 minutes. I didn't, um, I actually didn't feel like it felt its length. Um, it's, it's, it's got some nice kind of slow burn sections at the beginning and the middle of the track, so you get that bit of contrast. And the main groove riff is, you know, you could pretty happily listen to that for days, but with those little kind of, like, little kind of blackened touches added in on certain chords, it, it kind of gave the track a different, slightly different character to previous tracks. Um, but... It, it doesn't feel out of nowhere either because they'd already kind of hinted at it a little bit. Mm. Um, and then they throw in this really cool solo as well. Um, I like the I like the fact they went a little bit more uplifting in the solo um, yeah. because the, the tracks are quite dark, but the, the solos are nice. They, they give it a little bit of light in amongst all that kind of darkness. Um, the Burden was probably the first time that I was like, I could hear the Hang the Bastard kind of 
seeping mm. in a little bit. Um, probably more in the vocals because he pushes his, his register a little bit higher on that track. It's got this kind of real, like kind of devilish kind of tone to it. Really cool, again, quite blackened vocally. Um, but there are also some moments musically at the end where they, they go into like full blast beats and there's these like really like tortured kind of screams, which was really cool. Um, Becoming the Ocean is probably the track they, they let the, the black side, the black metal side out fully, um, which along with the, the kind of vocal style on the track, I got a little bit of Garia on that track. Um, the riffs are like starting to almost get into like full black metal mode with this like, but it's, it's weird because it's got, it's still got enough of their own style that it doesn't feel like out of place um, or they're just kind of switching things up entirely. Um, I think the the drumming from James Cook is, is great. I, I loved the little kind of like cymbal accents and he knows when to, to kind of pull back on the, the kind of faster rhythms and then just, you know, sit back and let the groove kind of do its thing. Um, as I said, he's he's a new addition to the band. He joined in 2022, I think. Um, but I think he's done a, a really good job on this. Um, it sounds like he's been playing with the band for years, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think, I actually think he was in, I don't know if you remember uh, Maleface. I do remember from Maleface, yeah. Um, I think he was, I think he played with them for a while. Um, Another throwback to a band people will probably not remember. But, um, we saw or old Dave, we can do that. Yeah, we can. I think we saw them with Kitty, actually. I think they we did Kitty. see them with yeah. Kitty, that's right. Um, a Feast on Sorrow, um, great chorus on that track. Probably my favourite um, chorus on the album. Um, and then, as you said, when Peace comes in, it felt like this could be the closing track. Like it had that yeah. feeling of, here's a kind of short outro, but then they decided to follow up with... Um, yeah, another 11 minute track in The Long Goodbye, uh, Where Do The Memories Go? Um, that track, um, some real like old school Metallica vibes in the first half of that track. Like, And I suppose like depending on your feelings <laughs> on Metallica, you either love or hate that. Um, I'm kind of somewhere in between. But there, there is a clear shift in the track about kind of just after the six minute mark where it does kind of move into this new area and it feels more grand and more epic. Um, the melodies become a little bit more kind of heartfelt, um, a bit more emotion. Um, and I loved that uh, Joe went for more kind of like lower register on that track. I thought that really, even though he went kind of lower, it actually cut through the track even more. Another killer solo um, that has this like almost kind of classic rock vibe, but it's not in a, mm. like a cheesy way. And I felt that really kind of elevated that part of the track as well. Strong end uh, to the album. Um, and it, it definitely had that kind of feeling of like finality. This was like the end of the album. Um, it is like just over 50 minutes. Um, and that doesn't sound long for a metal album, but I genuinely do agree with you in the fact that when it finished, I was like, oh man, I'm just <laughs> drained. I'm absolutely fucked. Um, and when it, fin when it finished, I was like, I can't, I can't do this a second time. Like I'm just going to take a break. Um, I couldn't go straight in with a, another listen. Um, that being said, um, I, I enjoyed this album way more than the previous release. Um, for me, this felt like a band that has has now found their sound and are now writing songs that kind of work in, in unison together. Um, and that kind of theme that they've carried through the album works really well. Um, I don't think they're necessarily reinventing the wheel in any kind of way, mm -hmm. but you know, it doesn't sound cliche, it doesn't sound forced. Um, I think it feels like it's coming from an honest place. And I think this is probably where they do start to do bigger things. I totally agree with you. I think I could hear these guys on a huge stage at this stage yeah. in their in their career. This album sounds massive. Um, and I will not be surprised if they know they start to kind of elevate into those kind of bigger venues. Uh, yeah, so um, although I wasn't on board with the first album, definitely enjoyed this way more. Um, Scores, what are we thinking on this one from Urn? What are you going to score this one? I am coming in with a four on this one. <laughs> um, like I say, I, I really like it. I think uh, I think this, uh, as a as a for me, coming into the band as a starting point, yeah. I I expect huge things from these guys moving forward. Mm. I think the, like you said, they've had a, a, a kind of nice niche in their sound, mm. which isn't the most original thing you hear, but they're so fucking good at what they do, mm. it's kind of difficult not to be completely enamoured with it I think they also have a really good I like musicians that go out there and record with different people mm. I think they've got a guy who's really pulled out an incredible sound from them yeah. so uh, who's next, obviously like 
Chris Field and the Joe Duplante. What are you going to do next? Well, like, the, the fact that there's a, there's, yeah, there's, a, there's a part of me that feels like the fact that Joe headhunted them, it's because he heard something in mm. their sound that he thought he could bring out. Yeah. And sometimes those are the best relationships to have between musician and producer is the one that is actively thinking about the things they can do mm. from behind the desk to make you sound as great as they know you can sound mm. or sound in their head so i think that's i think they should stick with that yeah four I, yeah. I, this is an album i will come back don't know how quick i'll run back to yeah. but it's one of those ones where at the end of the year when i'm talking about albums that made an impact on me orton's definitely there yeah yeah i totally agree um this is a four for me as well um love the production um definitely a, a better listening experience than I had with the previous album in terms of the kind of balance and the cohesion of the album. Um, done really well. I think um, I, I really liked the, the kind of blackened elements that they pushed a bit more in this album. Um, I definitely kind of lean into that a bit more as well. But yeah, four for me, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, definitely uh, made a fan out of me eventually. So um, yeah, definitely come and see these guys live. So hopefully they're uh, they're kicking around Scotland at some point. We'll definitely check them out. Uh, okay, so that is the, our review of the new album from Arn. Um, it's called A Feast on Sorrow. It drops on August 11th on Candlelight Records. Links below to the band, to the pre-order on Bandcamp. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Stick some comments in below. Happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. That is a review. Thank you for checking it out. Much appreciate. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone.